I received this little kit of an Arduino Uno clone, that's a tiny breadboard compatible size, from Pile of Stuff. And I'm going to try to put this together without referencing the assembly instructions because there's only a few parts and it's only a basic circuit with just what you need to get an Arduino Uno functional circuit without all the extra stuff. So the Arduino Uno has the Atmega 328P and this board has it in BIP format, same as this one. Then we're going to need a crystal oscillator circuit and here we have a crystal and Presumably there's a couple of capacitors here for it. And of course any power supply pins will need to be decoupled with some capacitors. There's a couple here. And if we look at the kit we have a crystal which will be part of the oscillator circuit. We have two LEDs, four capacitors, three resistors and headers, and a switch presumably for reset. So we have three resistors here underneath the dip socket. That's a good use of space, helping to keep this thing very small. And all the pins are nicely labeled, so if you want to hook up to a certain analog or digital pin you can quickly reference right there. And it looks like these are the LEDs. One's labeled power and one says L, which probably is going to D13 over here. This looks like the reset switch. There's two capacitors. Then on the other side of the board this would be the crystal and two load capacitors for the crystal, which I would expect to be tiny values, uh, several pico. And it looks like this is the programming interface header. So I see 5 volts and ground, but I don't see any markings for what the other three pins are. I'll have to look that up at the end. But I believe this comes with the blink sketch installed, so I should be able to put it together and see this LED blinking and this LED on solid. And this is made by Universal Solder, and they call it Breadboard Buddy version 2. So once this is put together, it will nicely fit on a breadboard. You can give it 5 volts and ground relatively easily, have some other circuitry to interface with it, and only when you need to program it or if you need to get some serial communication, then you would plug in an external interface. And I have this FTDI USB to UART interface. I'm going to try with this breadboard buddy. So we have the IC socket, pins are straight, and the IC itself. Also the pins are straight, packaged in this nice dense conductive foam, which I'm going to keep because that's always useful. 16 megahertz crystal for the oscillator circuit. And there's two 18 pico capacitors and two 0.1 micro capacitors. So these are for power supply decoupling and the others are for the crystal. Two different resistor values. Blue, gray, brown would be 6, 8, and 1, 0, so 680 ohms. And brown, black, orange is 1, 0, and 3 more zeros, that's 10k. So the 680 ohms must be current limiting resistors for the LED and a 10k pull up for the reset. We have reference designators for the resistors, but I don't know which is 10k, which is 680 ohms. And the LEDs, I don't see a clear marking anode, cathode, or the flat side. So I'm going to have to just probe everything out, see if I can get it right. I'm going to look at the traces where they're going, as well as the labels here for these pins. So I have 5 volts, I have ground, and D13, which is where I expect one LED to go, is down here. Reset is right here. So I think I already see the reset has a trace going to this resistor, which would tell me this other side should be going to 5 volts. This here is tied to this resistor. Then that one comes here and goes in a couple of directions, including what looks like possibly to this 5 volt pin. That means the other side of this resistor is going over to one of these LEDs. And this resistor I can't easily see right now where it's going, but it's going to be for the other LED. So let's start probing around. So I thought this pin goes to reset and the other should go to 5 volts. And same with this resistor. And now this one goes to a certain LED pin. It's this one right here. So that means through this resistor, this side of the LED would get positive anode. So that means 
this side should be going straight to ground. Ground is here. I'll start with this 10k. Try to get this in there. And it relatively went in smoothly and it automatically bent its own leads to help hold it in. And the other two just go in either of the other footprints. And today I'll be using Kester, but I can't tell the diameter unless I measure it because it's worn off the label. But it's the size that's appropriate for through hole. And because I'm doing this at a weird angle, I can't exactly see the pads and the legs here. I'm just winging it. If I need to do a touch up, I'll do it later. So I'll cut these leads off and I'm actually going to keep them because those are convenient for little wire jumpers on a PCB. Like if you want to short circuit a pad, that can be a zero ohm jumper and it's just a surface mount footprint. It's a little too wide to just put a solder blob. You can just throw one of these on there. But another use for these, possibly, depending on the diameter, sometimes you might be able to use them. Let's say you have a dip socket and you need to make some custom temporary connections. Well, these fit in there nicely and don't seem to be too big to damage the pin. Then you can solder something else on here and bring it elsewhere. So they can be used as test points. So at this point, I'll just do any other low laying components. These little 18 picos go up here for the crystal. And I'm trying to keep the camera in focus. It still wants to focus on things like the soldering iron and then the board gets blurry. And I'll keep these leads as well. These other capacitors must go on these other footprints because they're both the same value. So far, so good. Put the switch on next. And we'll look at the schematic and the product web page after we're done. I just want to try and get it up and running first and see how easy it can be without even needing the instructions. And now the crystal, which is not polarized. So I'll put this in whichever way. Now the LEDs. We said cathode is at the top side of the board, and that will be the shorter lead, which is also this larger anvil side of the LED package. So I will put these in. Now it's really shaping up. All we have left are the headers and the chip socket and the chip. So for the headers, it's going to be easier to put this in a breadboard to keep it aligned. And the headers I received have more pins than I need. I have to take these four off the end. So the way I do it, I try to grab it right on the last pin I want to keep. And then I grab the other side right up on that last pin where they meet. Then I kind of twist this end toward me and toward here to break it off at an angle. And that usually works for me. So it looks like that part way through. And it's done. The other side needs to break off right here. So I grab both of those pins where they meet, twist it on an angle, and done. Now I just need to line these up so that it looks about the spacing intended. Now those pins are at the correct space and we can solder them on and they'll be straight. Now I'll put the programming header now the chip socket, we have this indent on this end of the socket. So pin one is here. And maybe I should have put the socket on sooner because I can't lay the board flat to keep the socket flat to the board. So I'll do one pin just to be sure. Press on the socket and reflow and it looks to be in place. A lot of flux on the board now, but Looks like everything's connected and the only thing left is to put the chip on. But first I'd like to power it up and make sure nothing looks shorted. And I will apply power through this USB to UART interface, which has five volts and ground and the power LED came on. So there's no shorts and polarity looks good. And if I probe ground to five volts, 4.99. Pretty good. Now I need to install the chip. So pin one will be up here. 
There's the notch on the chip and the pin one indicator, so it lines up here. And because the pins on the chip are stretched outward, I'll just take this and roll it on the one side to push the pins in a bit, make it easier to insert. So I'll put that row in and then try to push in the other row and push them down into place. It's harder the more pins you have, but it can be done. And when it seems like both rows are started out and everything's level, we can try pushing it down. Seems like everything went well. It's good to make sure no pins missed the socket inside or outside and they all look connected. And don't break your breadboard. This is easier anyway. So let's power this up again and power it up. Now we have the power light is on constantly and the D13 LED is slowly flashing. Now let's try to actually get this programming interface to work with this FTDI serial interface and put another sketch in, see what happens. Now it's probably a good time to look at the actual product and its documentation over at Universal Solder. It says here the module has the same pinout as a Nano and has the at Mega 328P. I believe the Nano just has at Mega 328. And if we go over and look at the manual, the chip is programmed with the Uno R3 bootloader and it has a fade sketch similar to Blink. The programming interface hooks up to a USB to TTL UART converter. And you have to make use of the reset button manually to do the in-circuit programming. So the 328P crystal oscillator circuit, 10K pull up on VCC to reset, 100 nano decoupling VCC, and the analog reference voltage. Power LED connected to VCC, and the regular onboard LED goes to D13. So this is the programming header. The first pin goes to ground. The second pin goes over to transmit out. So the third pin then goes to receive in. And then we have VCC 5 volts on the far left. And I'm going to use this to power this board from USB. So to do programming, once we plug in the USB interface, we choose UNO in the Arduino IDE, select the COM port for our USB interface, then we hold down the reset button, start uploading, and when the IDE says we are uploading, release the reset button, and it should work as usual. So let's try this. Here's the UNO clone on a breadboard. I've also added over here on digital pin 11, a resistor capacitor network for a previous project I did with UNO. So this is a PWM audio synth generator. And here on the programming header, I brought wires over to this USB FTDI interface. Over in the Arduino IDE, I've loaded up this synth demo I did sometime last year. So digital pin 11 has an output with a 1K and 10 nano RC filter, and it uses this Edgar synth. And all I'm really doing, I set up some sine wave voices, and then I use two voices at a time to generate DTMF, dial tone, busy tone, ring tone, off hook tone. So if I throw this into an UNO, I should be able to get that audio playing out on pin 11. So I've chosen UNO as my board, and the only serial port installed for USB is the board I just have plugged in. So let's see what happens. So we have to hold reset, start the upload. When it says uploading, release reset. It works. So we were able to get it recognized as an UNO, program it, and have it run a sketch that I know works to verify everything's good. So that's a nice little soldering practice kit, easy to put together and extremely useful after the fact. Of course, you can always use something like a Nano with the same chip on it, but it's all for fun and you get to put it together yourself 
and support local small businesses. Well, I enjoyed this project. Thanks to Pile of Stuff for sending me this kit. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.